So in this video here, we're going to see how you can structure your math thesis. This can also be used for all your other projects. If you're going to write a report for your final project, bachelor and so on, we're going to go over an example of my own math thesis. We won't dive into the technical details. I'll just go over some tips and tricks, how we can write it in the easiest and best possible way. So let's just jump straight into it. Here we have my math thesis. It is about like transformers for time aware decoding of monkey brain recordings. I already have another video where we go into the technical details if you're interested in that. So first of all here, we just have the, the front page, not really anything special about that. Then we have the abstract here. It's a bit a uh, bit longer than a half page. So that is kind of like the, um, the length that is pretty good. So the abstract here is basically just to introduce the readers about like what you're going to work on in the project, what are your requirements, talk about some of the results and so on, the most important results, the methods that you're used throughout your project and report. So yeah, let's scroll down to the content here so we can basically just see what the whole basis is here is covering. So this is the overall structure here, the abstract and so on. I usually do that at the end. So we should basically like write out the whole like main part of the report before actually like doing like your discussion, conclusion and also abstract. So the way I'm, I usually do it is that I create like an overall structure. So first of all, I make a project. I'm not doing like a, a lot of writing like throughout my project. So normally I just do like all um, the actual like work. So if it's coding, um, research, basically just looking into different um, things, testing, training, um, whatever. I'm basically doing that to start with. And then I do the, the writing and also the whole project structure after that. But I really like to just like sit down at the end, just focus on actually like writing the text instead of writing it over the whole project. So if you're actually like starting out with writing out your report to start with the project or like in the middle of the project, then um, from my experiences, you will have to change it a lot and do a lot of modifications compared to if you just do everything at the end, I don't tend to like have to do too much fine tuning and too much rewriting of what I like want to have in the report. So first of all, like the most important thing that I do when I set up my projects and also my, my, um, my math phase here is that I write out the overall headlines. So I start with the monkey experiments, data set, the monkey brain recordings, so I have transformers and detention for neural activity, training transformers to classify monkey brain activity, LSTM model for neural classification, some comparison models down here at the end. Then we have the results, discussion and future work, conclusion, and then references at the end. So this is like a fairly straightforward structure for your report, but again, sometimes there can be some confusion of how you actually like structure your results. So you can some kind of like do it in, in, in two ways. So first of all, I like to introduce the project all of the different kind of things that are necessary to know before going into the methods and also for the training. So if you have a data set or something, it will make sense to introduce that to start with, basically just to introduce the, the viewer or like the reader about like how the data structure looks like, what are data that you're going to work with, because then you're going to build the models on top of that. So I'm basically having this like structure where I'm just building layer on layer because like the first layer and introduce like when I'm building on top of that with the models, training, comparisons of those models, results, discussion, I'm basically just building it up as a staircase. You could also have like, if you have like multiple exper experiments, multiple results, like multiple methods that you've been testing out, you can also divide those into parts. So you can basically like have, like let's say you have three different kind of like models that you're tested out. Then you can have like your models, the results and a short discussion. And then you can basically just have those three parts for your individual models, instead of combining them into one method section, one training result section, and one discussion section. So there's kind of like two approaches that you can do, and it really depends on your specific project, but I really like to like divide it into parts. So maybe just think about like, how can I build this structure here? Like how can I make this more readable for the reader? And also how can you engage the reader and act like make the reader understand what you're trying to do. Then I take these subtitles here, divide each section into like three, four, five subtitles. And then inside of these subtitles here, I basically just have a couple of bullet points of the things that I want to cover. And then I'm just starting from an end or like wherever I like just want to get started. It's not like I just start with like section three, then I finish section three before going to section four, 
five, six, seven, and so on. I basically just like mix and match here and there. Also just to keep like a red line throughout your whole report and your whole thesis by actually like, writing parts here and there. So you can some kind of like combine what you're actually like, reading because a lot of your sections, a lot of your subtitles and so on, they will actually like, be connected when each, when in each section. So in my situation that made very good sense. And I think it makes good sense in pretty much like every case out there or like in most scenarios. And you wouldn't really be too much off if you just do it in that way. So let's just scroll through, see the structure. We have the introduction, a couple of pages here. So my fast thesis here is around like 57 pages. Uh, the bare minimum was around 50 pages, but I think that will depend on your university. But yeah, we can just scroll through it. I then have like the manga brain recordings, which is more like the background of my project. But yeah, we have the manga experience and the data sets. So one of the most important thing is, if not the most important thing in your project is visualization, figures, graphs, table, like those are the most important things. And that is also what I've been getting like most credit for. And even in some cases, I could also like have removed a lot of the text and basically just replace that with a figure. Like people, they would rather look at figures, graphs and so on than actually like reading text figures. They can also like tell it way better. You can get a better overview over what's actually like going on. And also your supervisor, your sensor and so on at the exam, they won't really have like 10, 20 hours to read through your whole report. So they might actually like just skim it through, miss some of the most important details here and there. So that's why it's so important to include and, and spend time on, of actually, on actually like creating graphs, figures, like, uh, nice tables and so on and basically just structuring it that way so that is also one of the other steps that i'm doing after writing the bullet points for each section then i'm actually like going in making all the visualizations all the graphs that i want to include before i like writing the text and then when i'm writing the text if i feel like okay i could actually like replace this text with a new figure um then i actually like just go in and replace that so then I will have the bullet points and then I'll also have all the visualizations and graph. And then I can basically structure all the text around my visualizations and also the graphs and still have a pretty good overview over like what is going on in each section. So I have a good overview before I start any writing. So that will probably be my most helpful tip if you're writing your report, either for your PhD masters, um, if you're writing papers, research papers, final projects and so on, that is the most important and helpful tip that I can give you guys. Make sure that you have an overview, keep the red line throughout the whole report, good visualizations, good graphs and so on, and then you will be more than fine. The text doesn't really like matter that much. Of course, you'll need like some technical details here and there. You'll have to explain what's actually like going on in the figures, the tables, do discussions, explain the methods and also the theoretical part, but that will be way easier when you have the visualizations. So I'll just go forward here just to give you guys some inspiration. I'll just scroll through it so you guys can see my graphs. Here I'm basically just like taking samples from my data set, visualizing that, also like drawing on top of the visualizations just to show it. So this is probably one of the few sections that I could actually have replaced fully with just a figure. We could just have like a flow chart instead of describing the methods here used to extract the data. So that could have been replaced. I have some visualizations here for statistics. So instead of just having the statistics with like formulas and so on, tables, we can actually create these figures. Model architecture diagrams, those are also very, very good and it can be used for a lot of different things. You can also include formulas if you're using some of those. But again, having nice visualizations here, you can see that I actually have these color codes that I'm also using for the individual parts because all these parts are basically the same. So nice figures, you can create them. Like I'm using, I'm using draw.io to create my visualizations. Pretty much like all the visualizations from my report are from um, draw.io. You can also use Canva or whatever. I'll also make this report here available. You can go down in the description, then you can see a link to the report if you want to scroll through it and get some inspiration for your own project. We have some graphs here. You can also have the graphs side by side, depends on if you're doing comparisons and so on. I'll also include, I'm using LaTeX to actually like do the whole structure for my report. I'm going to have a template. I'll also give you guys that template to my um, overleaf. But yeah, let's go scroll through it. Have some visualizations here and there, basically, not having too much text, like it's only like one one page of text, maybe like a half a page of te text before a new graph or like a new figure or table is actually like showing something that can then be discussed and um, discussed and talked about in the text. 
here we have some tables. So these are the results so that will mainly contain the, uh, the tables where for the model architectures, the methods will more include figures. So these are some comparisons, discussions and uh, future work and the conclusion will mainly be text. So this is a pretty nice structure. It keeps a nice overview. When you're writing a report, make sure that you actually just add more bullet points to discussion and future work because you will, you will actually be more into what you're doing when you're going to write it. You will come up with some things that you can discuss later on in the discussion section. And it can also be good to refer between the sections. And I hope you can use this for when you're going to write your own math thesis. I hope they will, this will be helpful. This was the main purpose of this video, just to show you guys and give you guys some tips and tricks um, about how can you can write a good math thesis or like a good report. And also how can you do it in the easiest way without having to do too much rewriting. So thank you guys for watching this video here. I hope you learned a ton from it. Remember to subscribe button under the video here. It really helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. I hope to see you in one of the other videos, guys. Bye for now.